We'll be getting into the conversation of the skyrocketing food prices in just a bit. But for now, let's find out the basics. And I'll start with you, Mr. Stephen. Yes. Why are you running for president? I'm running for the president because the pillars that are holding this nation is really being weakened, especially the political pillar, the economical pillar, and the social pillar. If nothing is done, we are headed for a disaster. The politics that we are playing here, the political division, the politics of segregation, and this government is worse than their former apartheid of South Africa. The economy of this country is a economy that has run by the corporates, uh, fueled by debts, and looted by cartels. If I don't stop them, if I don't run, we are in for a serious How, how do you trouble. intend to stop them exactly? Number one, when I take over, I want to fix our politics, which is in a total mess. How? Because the politics is about, the politics we have is divide and rule. And a nation divided cannot stand to develop in the future. It will collapse like Rwanda, like uh, Somali, and like Southern Sudan. So what because steps are you going to take to make sure that The step is, is that when I line. take over, I will be a father figure. The president is supposed to be the father of the nation, and the father cannot afford to discriminate against the other children. So that is what is lacking. And everybody in this country is unique and special and gifted in one way or the other. You need to integrate them, bring them together for the good of the nation, which right. is not happening. Prof, how, how differently would you run this government if you want today? What, what alternative are you bringing to the table? Oh, the, the, I, I would want to start with the question that you asked, uh, why is he running Absolutely, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's related that, that, to why um, you're running for president and <coughs> what alternative you're bringing. Yes, and I, I do agree with him that we are in a deep hole and this deep hole has been caused by a problem of governance in this country. That argument has been made elsewhere and I, I don't wish to make that argument. What I wish to let Kenyans know is that because of bad governance, and not over just the last five years, over the last 54 years, because we've had the same political class for the last 54 years. So because of that bad governance, we have casualties, we have victims in this country, victims of bad governance. And I have divided the victims of bad governance into three. Number one is honest men. It is becoming a very difficult country, Trevor, for you to be an honest man. If you expect that you're going to work from eight to five and make a clean living and you are going to bring up your family that way in this country, you are becoming an endangered species. The number two casualty of bad governance over the last 54 years is women. You know that women were given, um, we, we had what we call the gender rule uh, in the 2010 constitution. Up to now, women are still fighting fighting for that and it's they're not just fighting yeah and they're not just fighting for that they are fighting for so many things over the last 54 years because they are casualties of the bad governance he's talking about number three and most important and actually the reason why I am running for president the casualties of bad governance in this country have been the youth okay. the youth have been stolen from the youth have been lied to. You have heard them speaking here saying, don't come telling us lies again. Because every election cycle, youth are lied to, youth are given false premises, and then all those promises are broken. So I am running as the voice of the people who have been disenfranchised over the last 54 years, honest men, women, and the youth. And, and where have you been that, or that whole time? Because the other question that comes to people's mind is, you just came out of nowhere and you're running for president. Where you know, have you been? It's, it's, it's offensive, Trevor, for a Kenyan to be told that he has come from nowhere. A Kenyan and cannot nowhere, come from I mean nowhere. The a Kenyan, area. A Kenyan no, no, cannot not come the from nowhere. Sense of it, yes. Professor. The reason why we were not in politics is because there are people who are supposed to be playing politics. They're called politicians. The reason why somebody like myself has decided to offer himself, or he has decided to offer himself, is because the people who have been minding the business of politics over the last 54 years have failed us. And only an extremely insensitive Kenyan or a stranger would sit by and watch a country going down because of a degenerate and a predatory political class and say nothing. I. Trevor, I'm very encouraged when I heard that there were 18 presidential candidates because for me it was a confirmation that the people of Kenya are finally tired of the political class in Jubilee and NASA and are willing to do something about it. Right. So that for me, I'm not even asking where have you been, I'm asking everybody else, where are you? We need to get our country back. All right, let me bring in Nazelin on this. Uh, what, what, what have you done so far? Why do you think the presidency is the only seat you should run for? 
I think uh, your Kenyans are well aware of my development track record in Kenya globally. Why the presidency? Uh, I have not answered your first question yet. Yes, but we, I need to be very brief. Yeah, let's go the other president. way around. Yeah. Why am I running for president? Yes. I believe uh, the political class as we know it, the incumbent and what is known as the opposition being ODM or NASA, whatever name they go by lately, I mean, they keep on changing that, is that they are the same class who are just one power comes in, another one fights to go back, that one comes out, another one goes back in. It is basically a bunch of thieves, a bunch of old thieves and a bunch of young thieves. The, old, the young thieves learned theft from the old thieves who now want to come back into power and continue theft of the nation. That is reality. And uh, if you can look at from independence, these two political class, the Odingas and the Kenyatas, have ruined our nation. You cannot say I cannot hold Raila Odinga to task because he has been prime minister, which has been the most powerful position in a 50-50 power sharing formula in the, in the transition government that we came to know. So you cannot say, oh, give me a chance to become president and I'll show you what I can do. He had the chance to be more, more powerful than the incumbent at that time. Kibaki was a dormant president and he actually just, the only people who benefited were his family and his, uh, those, those goons around him. So we say that we're going to take power from Ukuhuru and Ruto who have collapsed the economy and, the, and, uh, and our democracy in the nation to give it back to those who created that situation, I don't think is an option for Kenya. So when I stand up, I don't just speak out of my own interest. This is a public outcry reaching out to me. 700 pastors have endorsed me to run for president, reaching out to me. 2,000 imams throughout Kenya have filled endorsement forms. Nazin, run for president. You're holding the block Muslim vote now. And then the caucus of independent candidates of Kenya. Those original independents and others have said, no, Nazin, you're a president. Let's go to the ballot. So it's a public demand, more or less. And I think uh, I'd be proud to say I'm not a politician. I think my track record, including Nation, Euro Media House, has published me on three page spreads long before I entered the domain of politics in 2000. Okay. So my track record in the development country, in, this, in, this, uh, in, the, in the democratic space of Kenya, is well established both okay. locally and globally. Okay, we're about to take a short break here on a side, but we'll be back with a bit more. We're waiting for Abdul Badida, he's on his way here. But let me read you three tweets really fast so that you yes. get the context of this entire conversation. Jay Kubasu says watching donkeys as independent presidential candidates. Dr. Kenneth Wameo says the presidential debate has begun in earnest with independent obscure candidates. Sielewi, Washira C, these presidential aspirants guys are just joking. Why even pay nomination fee knowing very well we have a two-horse race? You'll respond to the two-horse race in just a bit when you come back from the break. This is awesome, Sidebar. Yes. Keep the tweets coming in. We'll read some of them live on air. Thanks for staying with Sidebar. The hashtag is Sidebar. You can tweet at Trevor Mbija or at NTV Kenya. We're still continuing the conversation. Joining us right now is Abdul Badida. He's running for president as well under the Alliance for Real Change. Thanks for making time. Listen, he, let me play you something. As he said earlier on, it's a quote to Secretary General. It's also related to most of the questions most of you are asking you on Twitter. Listen in. So I want to tell them, this year we are fortunate, Your Excellency. We will not have a lot of presidential uh, candidates kuja kutusumbua watu wengi kusema nataka kuwa president na hata kuwa kenyumbani sufuria ana. Sasa wakati huu farasi ni mbili beke yake ukiona ingine ya tatu itakuwa punda. Abduba, let me start with you. What is the response to Francis Atuli? Well, he's speaking his mind and uh, we all have to view our ideas. Yeah, that is how much he can reason. His belief is this and is a true horse belief, race. Yes, yes. All the others are just pundas. Yeah. If if he if he he spent that night without saying that, maybe you'll have been sick. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done this before. In fact, your numbers are here. The last time you reigned, Dida Mohammed Abduba, you garnered fifty-two thousand eight hundred and forty-eight votes. What makes you think things are so different this time? Uh, you know, there is nothing like uh, that is different or is not different. I'm a Kenyan. I'm not a Kenyan by default. I'm a Kenyan by birth. I've realized that there are problems affecting me, and I want to sort them out. Okay. Kenya starts with me. Okay. St let me come to you, Stephen Walker. And this is Stephen here in, on Twitter is actually saying, "Who are these presidential candidates? Where have they been? Presidential seat is not just a jackpot you go for." That's true. That's the perception of the Kenyan people. As we talk that the Kenyan people 
are suffering from colonial mentality and slavery mentality. And the reason why we are coming, or let me talk about myself, why I'm coming, to me it is a calling. The needs and the sufferings of the Kenyan people has fallen upon me. It's a burden that I felt for so long that I could not hold anymore until I came out and said, here I am to be the alternative. And I want to give you a different Kenya. Another Kenya is possible. If things were going right and the political class were leading us in the right way, somebody like me could have been doing something else. But there's no way I can settle, enjoy myself, relax for, for, with my family, and but, say but it where's doesn't. where's the sense of public service? Because you have to start from somewhere. Even Obama was a community mobilizer before he even became the Senate and then the president. That's You're just right. running straight for the presidential That's right. seat. I am over 50 years. I've been in this country. The only thing that I was not in the political arena. That's the difference. But I was there helping in nation building in my own way, in my own community. You get the point. But now because of the need that have arisen, I've come out and say, here I am as the alternative. All right. Yes. Prof, yes. Geoffrey Coet says, are those guys serious or their projects to induce a runoff? I, um, it depends on where he was looking. Uh, and I like what he has said. There is a <coughs> feeling in this country, a, a part of the population, that the only kind of service that is recognized is political service that if you have not been in political service, then you have not been in service. Let me tell you, Trevor, I am a teacher. And asking a teacher where you have been and what you have done for the country is a huge, huge problem in this country, which puts politicians ahead of teachers. We teachers, and Malimu will bear me out, we spend our lifetimes building generations. And therefore, when a teacher comes and sits here and says that they are offering themselves for this office or that office, the last question you want to ask them is where they have been. Mm. They have been building the nation. The people you need to ask that question is the politicians. They are the ones who have been gallivanting from one corner to the other, achieving nothing and making it look as if they are the only people who matter in this country. What we are trying to do, Trevor, is to change the narrative so that every Kenyan who makes their contribution in nation building is recognized in the same way as every other Kenyan. And I can tell you, Trevor, you know that your society is in trouble when doctors, when teachers, when journalists, when other kinds of professionals are treated in a demeaning manner and the people who are given the front line are politicians. Every society that has developed understands that the people who are supposed to be at the lowest rung because they are they're supposed to be servants yeah. are politicians. There are people who are the real drivers so of the economy. So how do you change all this? And, and why do we intend to change how, how do you intend to change the whole structure where you're saying politicians are glorified and they haven't done much? How, how are you going to change that? Even Number one, I told you that for me, the run of 18 or so candidates tells me that this country is ready for change. That is number one. Number two, I told you that honest men, women, and youth in this country are the biggest casualties. And therefore, my manifesto is very, very clear about the direction that we need to move on going forward. Okay. That honest men and women need to partner in order to youthify and modernize this country. Okay. We need to modernize this country. Modernization is our goal. Youthification is the method that we are going to use to do it. Okay, let, me bring, in, let me bring in Azlin on this. And uh, Wood Luanda, that's its Twitter handle, it says they all have the same ideology to bring down the establishment, but why not join hands to form a strong third force? Um, you know, uh, if you look at the 2,000 imams who have endorsed me in writing, and I showed them to you before the show started, mm -hmm. to run for president in Kenya, when you look at over 700 imam, uh, pastors backing me, when you look at the caucus, you look at the documents itself just before the show started, of over 1,700 independent candidates endorsing me to run as, uh, as the president of the caucus of the independent candidates of Kenya. It tells you what, Kenyans are fed up of the opposition, as I said earlier, known to be the opposition, that is NASA, Cord, Raila, whatever they call themselves, uh, or the incumbent, Jubilee. 
we can, I, two years ago, I thought of joining the president. Let me be honest with you. Two years ago, I approached somebody and said, I think I want to help Uhuru. But when you look at the problems, Jubilee has been exposed, the extreme yeah. corruption, and the president's own declaration, the surrender to corruption, that is an inability to tackle corruption and control this nation and his cabinet and his officers, was happened in the last two years. And I think God had a different plan. It didn't work out, and I thought, no, let me just move on forward. God has a plan. And as I said, I'm not a politician. I'm working on uh, mass public demand to stand for president, as I did in 2007. And I think for me, I'm a branded household name. Everybody knows me, Nazli. Okay. It's not, I'm not a newcomer or just popped up today. My history, I'm also the chair of the National Muslim Council of yes. Kenya. I also happen to have the largest network of women in Kenya, the Noor. So for me, it's like, what? Uh, how do you join corruption? How do you join theft? As I said, the young thieves have taken over power today, and the old thieves want to come back and take over, continue looting. There's just a bunch of thieves and thugs who have looted our nation. So how they different would you deal just with Just a moment. They have embedded issue. tribalism. How, how would you tackle yes, corruption? Yes, before I come to that. They have embedded, OK, how will, how will I tackle corruption? How would you corruption? tackle corruption if you are in the office? I think, today. first of all, electing me. First of all, I'm the face of Kenya. I have the Kamba blood in my system. I have the Maasai blood in my system. I have the Kalenjin blood in my system. I think electing Nazrin Umar, first of all, not just a woman, but this person who has committed her life for the sake of living for others for 22 years in Kenya and globally. Doesn't that statement bring about the tribal allegiances issue, which is yes, one of the things that's that very, most, very of the, important. most of the Let presidents me are trying to deal As soon as you appoint me, I do not have the, you know, unfortunately, tribalism has been embedded into the nation's DNA by the demagogues of power who are in power and those who want to take power again, okay. who have been in power. They have brought in the, 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 the parties are known to be tribalist parties. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm happy that the caucus has brought in tribes from every corner of Kenya we are well okay. represented. Hold on to that we thought are, in just a minute. Yes. We have a caller online. Good, good evening. Good evening. Yes, go ahead with your comment or question. Okay. Are you allowing me to talk Israeli? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Kama wa Kenya wangeli jua, wangeli pea bida kura. Okay. Kwa sababu Dida anafuata haki, mm -hmm. na hata ukisikia speeches zake ziko sawa. Kwa hivyo, mungu tu siku moja atapatia Dida kiti, atuongoze kwa sababu kuna matumaini mbele ya Dida. Alright, thanks. Thanks for making that point. Nazilin, you're finishing your thought. Yeah, you asked me how to change all that. First yes. of all, we need a president who's got guts. We need a president who's got a mother's heart for this nation. I would not, as I've said it again and again, I've turned it on Facebook so many times about this. I have promised and I've committed that I will go on a one meal a day as president until I can assure every Kenyan has a decent meal on the table. Okay. Uh, that's a, no, no, I've not answered the question. How will I change that? Yes. I said, we need a, a president with guts who can, on the other hand, handle corruption, theft, tribalism with an iron fist. I would say for the first two weeks as president, on my inauguration, I want to declare that all the people who know they've looted from my nation, I give them a two-week amnesty if they return the loot. Meanwhile, before they even get the two weeks are over, I want all my state officers, that is EACC, the IG, the DCI, and the DPP, to ensure all their assets, their bank accounts, their properties are frozen. Would you fire them? No. For Listen to me. Frozen. And within the end of two weeks, if there's no um, uh, the amnesty period is over, I want everybody arrested and brought to court. I don't care if it's the president's sister who looted, whoever it was. You have opposition. the police force who has yes. to investigate and all that. And that's, not, that yes, sort of system takes this, uh, a bit of time. Not, How are you, you doing to circumvent it? Yeah. You, do, you need to let me complete my answers. So if within the two weeks period, the DCI, the DPP, and the EACC bosses, the IG have not charged these people and brought them to court, within seven days, I want the resignations on my table or I'm firing everybody. All right, all right. Let's take another caller here. Good evening. Yes, go ahead with the comment or question. Abariyako. Salama sana. Sasa Dinda. Yes. Unajua Dinda angezimama MCA hapa Italy. Okay. Because, okay. yeah, 2013 has gone with mama president. Mm -hmm. Na ile shida tuko na, we don't, we don't want people like Dinda and uh, Wainaina and that old man. They should have fight for MP, MCA. All right. Aina mana ya muda kutoambia they can do this, they can do this, or they can't do. Okay. Thanks. We have a big problem, boss. Thank you. Did I let you respond to that directly? Uh, <coughs> Kenya needs two things. All of them and all of us speak the way we are speaking because we are tired. That shows we are not satisfied. 
Uh, that notion that change is needed, but it can come from the rich or from the bigger tribe, could be something that is still frustrating us further. And one thing that we lack in Kenya and most part of the world is we don't respect God. You know, the world where we are, Kenya included, yeah. is the third stage of human development. We existed in two other stages. And after leaving this world to go where Oginga, Odinga, Jomo Kenyatta, and all these guys have gone, we will still have five more other stages. Uh, Self-discipline is very important. You can come up with uh, anti-corruption, you can come up with the police, you can come up with all this, but if the anti-corruption is corrupt, what do you do? Imagine of this story, an authority tells a school, a secondary school head teacher, we need the passport photo of the form force. He has 500 or she has 500 form for students. The head teacher calls a photographer and he agrees. And all this, it is agreed he will do it at 100 shillings. Now the head teacher calls the deputy, he tells him, uh, I need the form force to bring today after lunch 150 shillings. What the photographer mentioned was 100. He added, 50. 50. The, head, the deputy head teacher will call the class teacher and he will tell him form force should come with 200. Okay. To cut the long story. Yeah. The class teacher will tell the form force, the form force will go home and tell the mother, Mwalimu Mesema, we need 300. The mother will tell the father, Mtoto Anataka 500. Everybody in this country is corrupt from the president to the watchman. When you and say everybody, does that include yourself? I think I would ask him does to that withdraw that statement. Yeah. Let me Speak talk. No. When you, you were talking, say, when no, you were talking, I was reasoning. Everybody no, hold on, hold on. Nazarin, hold on one second. Let, 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 him, let him justify his statement. Yeah. Let you let just mentioned that everyone is corrupt. If 51% are corrupt, yeah. the 49% are also in that lot. Here, we are going by estimating. So does that include yourself as well? Well, I'm in a very corrupt, dirty country. So you're also corrupt? Yes. Is that, is that the admission? So then why are you running for Kenyans president if you're already, if you already given this. up and you let say everyone is corrupt One anyway? One thing that is needed, let me finish my point. You called me to listen to me. Okay, go ahead. He didn't, One he thing didn't that is call needed. me to show me to the people. Number one is self-discipline is not there. ICC, God says, if you are alone, I'm the second with you. If you are two, I'm the third with you. If anybody has no respect for God, we cannot respect Kenya and the people of Kenya. One thing that we need, the televisions to show, and everybody to talk about, is the right of the almighty creator, number okay. one. Number two, about politicians and the platform they are holding and all this, just needs one simple thing. The wage bill has to be based on a scientific fact. Okay. Why should somebody Everybody is going there, and everybody wants somebody who earns a salary of 250,000 wants to be an MCA. And if you ask what is the salary of an MCA, it's 100,000. But okay. you are getting better than that. But here is, it is an avenue to steal, is an okay. avenue to do funny things that you want. I have to take a if really wage, quick break right now. If the wage the bill can be disciplined, if yeah. you will base it on education, you don't care whether you are the president and you have a degree, Okay. And somebody is a police officer and has masters, but there should be a formula. Whether okay. education, Hold on whether to that thought. I have, to, I have to take a quick break right now. When we come back, we'll discuss the issue of corruption. Now that you've said everyone in the country is corrupt, we'll see how the others have to respond to it. We're taking a short break. Mark Masai and Gladys Gashande will be here with the highlights in just a bit. And we are back on Sidebar. The hashtag is Sidebar, Trevor Mbija, and TV Kenya. So many of your tweets. I'll try to get through them really fast. Nelson Dungu here says, I would advise all independent presidential candidates to form a coalition and rally behind one of their own. Joab Nanjira says, no matter what they have done, presidency is a political post. Vie for a position around you first, then we'll see. Maregua Douglas says, uh, Dida is so honest, I wish he could garner more votes. And then the other question is, Dida has just admitted is corrupt. Why on earth would you want to ascend to the highest office? That's from Steve Agessa. I'll let you respond to that real quick before we come to Stephen. 
Stephen Agesa says Dida has just admitted Stephen that needs he's to corrupt. Revise his literature notes. <laughs> Why is that? And he also needs to revise something about semantics, word meaning and context and all this. That is your response. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen, what do you make <laughs> of the statement that you made that Kenyans are mostly corrupt? And also there's another question here asking, Daudi saying, uh, why don't the independent candidates form a coalition and rally behind one of their own? Okay, one thing is that uh, we, the, the deadline just ended the other day. We are having a meeting on Monday. All the independent candidates are invited. It will be on the papers on Friday. So independent candidates should read the papers on Friday. It will be announced. After we have the meeting, then we are going to get the rules of engagement. Those are some of the things we are going to talk about. So at the end of the day, we'll decide whether we're going to support one of us or where we're going and each one in its own. But what we know that the independent candidates have come together as wherever they are they are campaigning as a team. But after the meeting on Monday of all the independent candidates in Nairobi, we will decide the way for the presidential candidate. All right. Yes. Prof. It's upon the independent candidates to decide. Prof, about yes. coming together and rallying behind one of your own because that's the same with this I don't question know what that most people seem to be asking. I don't know what one of your own means. Trevor, when I decided to run for president, I decided to run for president, and I have told you, because we have victims and casualties of bad governance. We have victims and casualties of tribalism. We have victims and casualties of corruption. And I have said that there are three groups that have motivated me to run for president. Honest men, women, and youth, who are the groups that have been victimized by bad governance over the last 54 years. And I have put out a manifesto, and I can give you a copy for your reference, saying honest men partnering with women to youthify and modernize Kenya. Mm -hmm. We need to modernize this country. We need to move from saying Jubilee is bad and corrupt and give a new vision to this country. One of the things that I do not want to happen, Trevor, is that I do not want us to find ourselves in the situation we found ourselves in 2002, when we were told Moi must go, but there was no vision beyond Moi must go. So what happened after Moi went? The same political class started fighting over power. 15 years later, they are still fighting over power. So for me, the biggest question in deciding whether to run for president was, what alternatives, what alternative vision are we giving to the country post NASA and post Jubilee? When we are saying that this political class needs to go home, what vision are we giving to the country? And I said, we need to youthify this country in order to modernize it. If this country will become a first world country in a generation, which is our intention, then we must make sure that we lay the foundation for the young people in this country to become the drivers and the engine for that transformation. Okay. And my whole running for president is based on the need to youthify and modernize the country. Okay. So that when we get into government, which we call youthification and modernization government, we want to make sure that we have a new generation, we have new thinkers, we have new actors who are going to modernize this country. Otherwise, we can sit here and say that Jubilee is bad. We know it is okay. bad. Nazlin, Jay Kubasu says many independent presidential candidates are set up for spoiled votes, which will be more than a million votes. Are you just spoilers? I don't know, maybe we can speak that for those who have just popped up or who are not interested, serious. I mean, there are 18 of them in Kenya so far have declared their bid. Mm -hmm. For me, I have been on the ballot in 2007. It was declared a, a disputed election. Votes were rigged, votes were stolen by both sides of the divide, just that the incumbent reached the ballot faster in the declaration. Secondly, I have committed my life to humanity. I'm globally acclaimed. Universities all over the world have written and published books about my work. I'm the only woman invited even by kings, like for example by the King of Spain, to host the Second World Congress for Rabbis and Peace, uh, Rabbis and Imams for Peace for Middle East. I've been the old, only woman there. I'm most profiled in every newspaper or, or CNN or BBC or Al Jazeera, everywhere. Yeah. And I have suffered extensively, especially being the chair of the Muslim Council, where I've defended those oppressed, extrajudicial killings. Our sons, over 900 boys, Muslim boys, have disappeared in police custody. I've spoke for them. I've spoken out for them. Um, every other week, I mean, USA Today, Global Post, Washington Times, as a global Muslim leader. For me, back here, my projects on the ground, any candidate who may stand today, or all the incumbents, and those, I told you, the young thieves 
and the older thieves, you know, the, the Raila's team rather, none of them put together can hold a candle to my development record in Kenya. Every corner of Kenya, I've taken my own wealth and gone and start income generating projects for the poor, yeah. for the youth, for the widows, for the orphans. I'm all over Ken the nation, that's okay. a fact. And because of that, including your own media house, Nation has published me twice on three page spreads in the past, okay. all, all over. Mm -hmm. Then I suffered persecution. And I went through hell and back. I was arrested. I was called a thief by the police. My house was raided by police in broad daylight in 2012. That's why I could not run in 2013. So my do you feel that you need to in be the president of criminals. because you're old? Just a moment. My name was entered in the register of criminals. Five truckloads of police took my entire property away, including my dogs. But I never gave up. There was even a media blackout. Can you imagine, for example, in 2007, I held 29 rallies and meet the people towards. Nobody saw them. So the same thing has been happening now. But I never let myself break. I'm back on my own. Uh, it is in the press. I think my declaration has taken over and okay. has opened up room. But what I'm saying is it's time to create change. Okay. When somebody says, what have you done? What? Uh, I've done much more than them. Okay. The difference, hold, hold that thought. We have a call that. online. Let's get the caller first, then we'll come back yes, to that. Yes. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, too. Yes, go ahead with your comment or question, sir. Yes, uh, hi, guys there. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm very fine. Good. Go ahead with your comment or question. Yeah, my comment is that uh, I'm going to ask these guys that uh, where were they? Okay. That's my that's my first question. All right. And then why why are they coming at the eleventh hour? Okay. And then my my third again that the Kenyans we are suffering. Okay. And uh, none of them have seen them anyway, trying to to tell Kenyans that what is really happening in Kenya. Okay. Uh, my last thing is that has been the project of uh, to believe because you see okay. when uh, when NASA says that they will not be in the ballot, okay. if the IBC what they have actually placed in the court uh, ruled that the uh, the, tally, uh, the NASA will not have any opponent, tender. Okay, then, thanks. Uh, You've made your point already. Thank you. Yes. So, I you, think uh, that real quick, because been, we're running out yeah, of that time, has been we, we've already answered the some of those who, are, who have popped out in the yes, last okay. hour. I have explained yes. the reasons why they Go have. Yeah. For me, that's not the case. I, I would say that the difference between me and any other candidate, whether uh, uh, who is aspiring now, or the incumbent who's already in power, or the opposition less known to be uh, Rela's team, or Rela is the head of it, okay. is that they have stolen from the nation to enrich themselves and benefit their own families. Okay. By entrenching uh, tribalism and nepotism. I have impoverished myself by enriching my nation with my own wealth. Okay. That's the difference between me and anyone else who could stand And because of time, I'll, I'll also Kenya. give you the final word here. Maureen Cherono yes. says we need to hear what will be done, not what has happened. Yes. Reminding us is like adding salt to injury. And then Bernard Kaibe says, can they tell us what they intend to do in regard to tribalism and inequality in this country? I you, think have, you, have a, you have a minute to do that yes. because we're running out of time. I'll run that through all of you and then we just close. Yes. For me, I would yeah. say, as I said earlier, I'm going to deal with the demon of cor corruption and tribalism with an iron fist okay. and uh, I do not agree with the president when he says that the constitutional, uh, constitutional bodies are independent he has no right to fire anyone no he should go into every institution and cabinet pull people okay. out by their collars and throw them out and arrest them and charge them these are some of the things that need to be done some of those and people have to, uh, yes this is what I would do and not only that I would yeah. actually look at uh, my salary would go to 50 percent everybody's salary should be slashed by 50 percent and we should take all the money we gain back from freezing accounts and uh, freezing assets so and all those people have security of tenure there isn't much you can do about that no we have we can do much about that why can't we who created these laws and they can be amended there's no written law that we cannot go back to okay. serving this nation and that right. we all pose in fact i would really hope that okay. kenyans would agree with me to say that we should go on minimum wages okay if we go on minimum we're running out of time wages, i have to give them yes. a chance to speak so that wages, we finish no this up no kids actually seek right. for elective office okay. you know that thank you dida uh, about final uh, remarks about, really about about a question that yes. most most kenyan ask even those who claim to be educated yeah why are they coming the, the, the 11th hour? Yes. It is illegal to campaign before it is declared by IBC. Okay. And currently the dates that are gazetted okay. uh, by IBC for anybody who has any idea to improve this country is from 30th of May, okay. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day up to 5th of May, 6 p.m. Okay. Anything that is happening before those gazetted days, in, in, in the sense that I will do this or that, 
that is illegal and all of okay. them need to be in jail. All right, Stephen Walker, really fast. Okay, we are, what we are I will running do out of when time I take seconds. over, I'll create 5 million jobs every year for three years uh -huh. because I want every Kenyan over 18 years to be employed. Mm -hmm. Number two, I will provide free education up okay. to university All right. from primary one to university. You have to leave it at number two because we're running out And of then time number here. three, free medical care. Okay. And I want to pay the Kenyan debt within five we'll, years. We'll so get you back to free. explain how exactly we're going to you. do that. Prof, re closing remarks really fast. Youthify and modernize. And the somebody only asked way, what does that even mean? It means that the only way for <laughs> us to modernize this country and to make it a first world country <laughs> is to make youth and the youth the engine and drivers of transformation. This country is not going to be transformed by railways, it's not going to be transformed by ports, okay. it's going to be transformed by its young people. All right. And therefore, we must invest in a youth development infrastructure that will make sure that our young people right. become the drivers of transformation. All right, thank you for making time. We have to leave it there. We're running out of time here. Thank you to my guest, Nazli Omar, independent presidential candidate, and also president of the Caucus of Independent Candidates, Abdul Badida, Alliance for Real Change. That's a candidate that the party is running with. Stephen Owoko is an independent candidate as well, and Professor Michael Wanaina, independent presidential candidate. I want to thank you for the time you've made. We'll get all the others as well. There are 18 of them, so just be patient. My name is Trevor Mbij. Always a pleasure having you with us, and thanks for the feedback. I see so many of them we run out of time. Thank you.